pilot monitoring checks the triple indicator for any residual brake pressure. Sometimes you get a brief brake pressure indication. This is because the aircraft is performing an alternate braking functional test. But if it remains there, then apply the residual braking procedure in the QRH. Let us take a moment and look at the QRH. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 Refresher Series Episode 7 Eyeless Approach this is the seventh episode of this series to refresh your memory on the normal procedures we perform on a daily basis. Do enjoy this series. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals. This video is merely a guide. And before we start, do click on the like button, subscribe, and press the notification bell for the latest episode updates. Okay, let us dive in. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, what are we trying to achieve? To achieve a safe landing, the aircraft needs to be stabilized. Next question is, what is the stabilization criteria? It means that the aircraft must be in the correct path both vertically and laterally. The aircraft must be in the landing configuration that you desire. And the thrust is above idle to maintain target approach speed. There is no excessive flight parameters deviation and we will discuss this more later on. Complete the landing checklist and if not stabilized by 1000 feet IMC conditions or 500 feet at VMC conditions, just go around. Okay, now we are coming to land in Hong Kong International Airport. Be a man, do the right thing. When the approach phase is activated, target speed becomes V approach. Activate the approach manually if early deceleration is required. Approach phase will activate automatically when flying over the decel waypoint with NAV. Pilot flying will call out for flaps 1 and pilot monitoring will check the speed and extend flaps 1. The auto thrust will guide speed towards the maneuvering speed for the current configuration. Pilot monitoring check speed is below VFE and decelerating and it is recommended to select flaps at VFE minus 15 knots. The question is why? Do comment below if you know why we select flaps only at VFE minus 15 knots. Pilot monitoring announces flaps 1 after checking the blue number on the ECAM flap indicator. Make sure that the two-way point is correct. Correct flight plan sequencing is important to ensure that the planned misapproach route is available. Press the approach push button, arm the lock and GS modes, which is displayed in blue in the FMA. Select the second autopilot, check for the display in landing capability. Pilot flying call out the FMA, lock star. For decelerated approach, the aircraft must be established on the final descent with flaps 1 and S speed or above 2000 feet AGL. For tailwinds greater than 10 knots, decelerated approaches are not allowed. When you intercept the glide slope below 2000 feet, select flaps 2 at one dot below the glide slope. Pilot flying call out lock. Pilot flying call out for GS star. And set go around altitude. Pilot flying call for flaps 2. Pilot monitoring will say speed check. Flaps 2. Select flaps 2 on glide slope approaching 2000 feet above threshold. Pilot flying then call for gear down. Pilot monitoring then announces gear down after checking the red lights on the landing gear indicator to confirm the operation. After selecting the gear down, the pilot monitoring confirms the auto brake selection, arms the ground spoilers and turn the nose and runway turn off lights to on. Pilot flying then says flaps 3 and pilot monitoring then says speed check flaps 3. Pilot monitoring then checks the ECAM wheel page and landing gear indicator panel for indication that the gear is down. Pilot monitoring checks the triple indicator for any residual brake pressure. Sometimes you get a brief brake pressure indication. This is because the aircraft is performing an alternate braking functional test. But if it remains there, 
then apply the residual braking procedure in the QR range. Let us take a moment and look at the QR range. As you can see, you should press the brake pedals several times, but if it still remains, keep the anti-skid and nose wheel steering to on and use auto brake medium. If auto brake not available, apply manual braking. Beware of possible braking asymmetry and if you suspect a tire damage after landing, well, that is a whole different story for another time. Call out for flats full, speed check, flats full. Then the pilot monitoring reads the landing checklist. On a 3 degrees glide slope with config full, the aircraft decelerates at approximately 20 knots per nautical mile. Aircraft is fully stabilized and what the pilot monitoring should do is to make the following callouts during the final approach. Call for speed. If speed decreases below target by 5 knots or increases above target by 10 knots. Sing rate. When descent rate exceeds 1000 feet per minute. Bang. When bang angle becomes greater than 7 degrees. Pitch. If the pitch becomes lower than 2.5 degrees or higher than 10 degrees. Lock or glide if deviation is half scale lock or half scale glide slope. Data lock will be at 700 feet RA with lock and GS arm or engage. The ILS frequency and course are frozen in the receiver. Any modification in the MCDU performance page such as the surface wind, landing configuration or V approach does not cause a change in managed speed. Land mode engages below 400 feet RA and can only be disengaged by engaging go round mode or if both autopilot FDs are disengaged. Do you know what is the significance of land mode? Well, do comment below if you know the answer. For manual landings, the pilot should disconnect the autopilot early enough to resume manual control of the aircraft and evaluate the wind drift before flare. At minimums, pilot monitoring will call out minimums and pilot flying will say continue. If the pilot flying decides to discontinue the approach, he will call for go-around flaps. Okay, for landing, thrust levers should be retarded to idle by 30 feet and the pilot monitoring will announce spoilers, reverse green and decel. Once the pilot monitoring call out for 70 knots, the pilot flying should select reverse idle by 70 knots. Deselect the auto brakes by applying the brakes and you can use the rudder pedals for shallow turns. At full pedal deflection, you will get plus minus 6 degrees of nose wheel steering. Thereafter, for lower speeds, you can use the tiller. Now, let us talk about ILS raw data approach. A raw data ILS is an ILS flown without guidance from the FDs. It can be flown in any configuration change from a decelerated to a fully stabilized approach. Now let us look into decelerated and stabilized approaches in more detail. Flying a decelerated approach needs constant trust and speed changes to select the next flap to be configured by 1000 feet AGL. While you are on the glide, you are configuring at the same time. Flying fully configured before GS intercept requires large trust and pitch changes during intercept. These are some ballpark figures at flaps 1, thrust will be at 55% and 1 and pitch will be at 7.5 degrees. At flaps 2, the pitch will be at 5.5 degrees. At gear down, the thrust will be at 75% and 1. And at flaps 3, the thrust will be approximately 83% and 1 with the pitch of 4.5 degrees. At flaps full, the pitch will be at 3 degrees. Thrust at 55% and 1 and pitch to 2.5 degrees on the glide. The easiest way to fly raw data ILS is to configure the aircraft to have minimal thrust especially when using manual thrust and speed change while intercepting the glide path. The plan is to have the aircraft at flaps 2 and flying at F speed before intercepting the glide slope. During intercept, lower the gear then continue the flap selection. Select autopilot off, select the ILS push button on, select the FDs off and select track flight path angle to display the bird. Intercept the localizer at S speed or below. When localizer alive, select inbound ILS course. The track index will be set to the ILS course. 
Use 20 to 25 degrees of bank to intercept. If the localizer is displaced to the right, fly the bird to the right of the track line and left if the localizer is displaced to the left. While established on the localizer, the tail of the bird should be aligned with the track index. This method allows accurate log tracking, taking into account any drift. The ILS course pointer and the track diamond are also displayed on the PFD compass. When established on the localizer and GS becomes active, select flaps 2. When quarter dot below the GS, the pilot should initiate the interception of the GS by smoothly flying the bird down to the glide path angle. The top of the tail of the bird should sit on the horizon line for a 3 degrees slope. When established on the glide slope, lower the gear. Select landing configuration, flaps 3 or flaps 4. Make small corrections in the direction of the deviation and when established on the glide slope. Reset the bird to the glide slope angle. Should the lock deviate, fly the bird in the direction of the lock index. When re-established on the lock, set the tail of the bird on the track index again. Remember to check your bank angle. Below 1,500 feet AGL, do not use more than 10 degrees course correction. If using manual truss, approximately 55% N1 will be required. If a go-around is performed, then the FDs will reappear and guide the aircraft in SRS and go-around track. Now finally, last part, let us look at the ILS glide slope from above. If ATC delayed the descent on the approach or cleared an aircraft late onto an ILS or slow actions by the pilots, then a glide slope interception from above may need to be done. The pilots must react without delay to meet the stabilization criteria. And what is the stabilization criteria again? Well, scroll to the beginning of this video to refresh your memory. Recommendation is if you are anticipating a glide slope capture from above, the aircraft should be in config 2 with gear down. Well, don't make it harder than it already is. Well, that's what she said. Well, in order to get the best rate of descent and keep below limiting speeds, flats full would be preferable. When you are cleared to intercept the ILS, press the approach button on the FCU and confirm lock and GS are armed. When lock star is engaged, select the FCU altitude above the aircraft altitude to avoid unwanted alt star capture. Select bird speed 1500 feet per minute initially. Use bird speed rather than open descent to ensure that the auto thrust is in speed mode and not idle mode. Monitor the airspeed to avoid exceeding VFE and speed brakes may be used. When approaching the glide slope path, GS star will engage. Set your go around altitude. Monitor the GS capture with raw data pitch, vert speed and GS deviation. Once established, configure to landing configuration.